why I said I'm here with gray eyes. You might not quite understand. Here we go reading the X-Men. There you go, Gray. I knew that that was going to stop very suddenly. I realized uh, by the end that I did not edit that yet. So, And people might not even know what I'm talking about because when we get to it, I will edit it a bit. But I am here with my man, Gray. What up, Gray? Hey, you know what? I've, I've always wanted to hear Jimi Hendrix sing my name to so Thank you so much for that. I'm doing <laughs> yes. well. I'm doing good. That, that's uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, alive and well, singing your name and also <laughs> talking about Grant Morrison, I did have a rap song that I was going to throw out there that really had nothing to do with the X-Men or anything of it. Oh, really? Yeah, it was going to be very odd. It had a lot of fancy words. It was funny, but it wasn't working out. And then we had to start. But also, I'm telling you, when I'm thinking about this, when I think of the X-Men, now, when we do think of Grant Morrison, I do think of, like, psychedelic stuff and whatever. So Jimi Hendrix works. I don't know. This is a book that I think would have been more of an 80s synth pop new wave tech deal might have worked a little better. Ooh, so nice. maybe maybe it will work something out. Maybe as I say this, people have already heard a different thing, but it'll probably be Jimi Hendrix as we jump into the X-Men. We have, we have a, I actually got shocked how long ago it was, the X-Men, because I'm too. going through the collection. I'm like, okay, this is probably like, oh, okay, December, November. I'm like, holy crap, we haven't done this in a long, long time. But we are back. With issue number 118, we're going by the trades, and there's a weird deal where issue 117 seems to be like a mis- missing issue. It, it's a one shot. You ended up, did you read it fully? Or did I you did, just yeah, look it up? Okay. Yeah, um, it's a weird one. It introduces a mutant called Beak. You know, Beak, okay, I don't yeah, know who yeah, it is. I know Beak, the one that has a beak. It looks, I, I think I do. Really I freaky him. looking design. Yeah, 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 it's freaky. Yeah. And, uh, with that though, and Beast got hurt in that issue, right? That's what we yeah. continue on in this one. So that seems to be the big deal. But I'm going to give you the credits here. This is, and we said new X Men 118. It ends up being renumbered and things like that uh, eventually, I think. But we end up having it still as the 118, and it's written by Grant Morrison, Ethan Van Skyver on pencils. Since then, he's caused a little controversy. You end up having three anchors. And it is Apprentice Rollins, Scott Hanna, and Cindy Flore. Colors, hi-fi, design, and letters by Comic Craft. So you end up having an issue that looks pretty good. Ethan you know, Skyver is a pretty good artist. Whether or not you like him or not, that's beside the point. But If you say his name, Jim, apparently you get cancelled these days yeah, on Twitter, again, don't you? I, I was going to say, you say <laughs> the name three times, three I get times. punched in the mouth and I get cancelled. But I think <laughs> the, the art looks good. I always did like his art. Again, he's does some crazy stuff but here we are and you start out with also i do want to point out that though hi-fi i have talked to on the hi-fi design the colors are pretty good i don't think hi-fi is canceled so i think he he's pretty good but you end up having a mutant uh being killed by a guy who wants to be a mutant and you throw in this whole human thing and this whole john sublime this author and kind of guru who is preaching the idea that anybody can kind of be a mutant, but like a third species of hybrid. But this isn't anything like genetic. He really is saying you grab organs from the mutants and kind of stitch instead, you know, that sort of thing. Though I would rather have uh, two lips on my my organs, but that's beside the point. I told you I'm going <laughs> to end goodness, up saying where some are we going weird with stuff. <laughs> I'm telling you, I haven't slept. I'm so tired. I got up uh, super early as well, Jim. I was up at 4 a.m. watching a live game, yeah. Germany versus Scotland. You know what's weird is <laughs> I ended up, because when you ended up uh, messaging me, I was still recording our DC stuff with Eric. And I, or actually, it was right before. And when I got on with him, I'm like, I think Grace up real early. Like the idea that you ended up messaging me, I'm like, I know the time deal. And boy, he is up early. So you were watching some of the footy. Uh, is that what it was? That's right, yeah. It's okay, the European cool. um, tournament just started, like where the, all the big teams you know, from Europe face each yeah. other, and then you've got Scotland as well. <laughs> poor Scotland. Uh, poor they, Scotland. Got, they got thrashed by Germany, Jim. Really? I, yeah. I, I actually used to watch it uh, every year as well. I used to really be in the Premier League uh, footy uh, that I would have to get up early again because of when the uh, crazy time difference. Here. Yeah, the yeah. differences uh, both for me and you. Uh, and you end up where my favorite... Uh, Thing of the German, uh, what's it called? The German soccer team was in that one soccer movie with Pele and Sylvester Stallone. 
back in the day, which I, I escape really, to victory it, was that yeah, it? It, yeah. it. It was called Victory Here, but Escape to okay. Victory in Europe. I love that movie so it's much. Great film. I, I really, for some, you're not supposed to like the Germans in that. But I thought they were pretty cool. I, I always liked the black and white uniforms is what I had. And I used to have a, a Germany kit back in the day when I would uh, go around and play soccer and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. But here we are again with the X-Men. And you do have this whole deal. And the idea of a guy named John Sublime, it actually does sound so Morrison-y the way yeah, that does, that plays out. And again, this guy, the third species, it's kind of a weird play. And this kid who's up, it looks like there is a school deal it does say if you look it's like merchant high school or whatever they're having an assembly this guy had killed another kid but is yelling you think i'm a nerd nobody's gonna call me a nerd anymore and says and by the way the kid i just killed not only is he gay he's also got x-ray eyes he was a mutant and it was weird because the way that this kid was playing it you kind of thought that he liked mutants but he did kill him for his eyes. Well, he's and wearing he a Magneto say. t-shirt, isn't he, Jim? As you pointed out. So that, that's really weird. Does he want the x-ray eyes, obviously, doesn't he? Yeah, and he says, if I'm going to stitch these x-ray eyes in and no lady is going to be uh, away from my gaze, then I'm going to look and do the x Again, it, it reminded me of a play on the comic book deal where any kid, and especially a boy, would see those x-ray specs. And the first thing you think is like, all right, I'm going to get these and take them to school. Always the always wanted to Yeah, it's always the deal. It's always <laughs> sus. Nobody's ever, you know, come up with a good thing to do with those. It is always sus. But the police come then and pretty much gun them down. I mean, they just rip through them, shoot them. The eyes go flying. It's so a great, like, um, panel there. progression, isn't it? You see he's talking. One minute he's, like, showing the eyes, like, yeah, they'll implant them into me. Next minute he's got a hole in the head and he's down yeah, on the oh, floor. It's, it's he's vicious, gone. yeah. And he, he says, again, I'm going to implant these eyes and do this. This is what it seems these human do. And then we just go forward with some announcements. And it is this whole thing, this John Sublime. He is, you know, pushing almost like a religion the way this mm. is. But they're also reacting to a lot of the things that have happened. You know, she was mentioned all these things going with the, the mutants. And even what we didn't get in that 117 that you ended up reading where they are attacking the mansion and things like that. And saying that with all that, some of the people are kind of wearing these Magneto t-shirts and trumpeting the idea of how Magneto is right and things like that. But we have Jean who's there listening in, watching everything, gets a hold of Logan because she is on Cerebro and trying to figure out where all these other mutants are. And they do end up realizing one is around and that's what Logan is going to get. But I'll give it to you because then you have a scene where the Xavier Institute, it's just getting, you know, it's getting picketed. People are violent, graffiti everywhere. And, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to go out. And it's going to be Scott, Jean, and Emma. Emma has the cuckoos with her. And the cuckoos are, I like the cuckoos, but they are kind of freaky. I wasn't the way sure what they goes. were, Jimmy. I was asking yeah, you about them. They're like the children of the corn is what they are. And That's I do it, like yeah. them. And I've only read a couple things with There's them. There's an old I'm, British book um, by the author of The Day of the Triffids called The Midwich yeah, exactly. Cuckoos. Is that, <laughs> I, isn't it? It's I based that. on yeah. them. Yeah. 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 So when you have all this deal, me and you, I mean, we're not the biggest X-Men fans. So when we do have some characters that pop up, we might have some trouble with them. But kind of combining our deal. All the time, Jim, I think that we're okay. The I know. The Cuckoos, I do like with Emma. Uh, again, Emma is just like over the top, just a bitch. And I do like her because of that. But you go from there because they come out to kind of say they want to talk to these protesters, but you know, the, these protesters don't really want to talk anyway. They don't, do they? Yeah. So um, you go from them. there because it is kind of funny what they do. Great art as well, by the way. I know we talked about it earlier, but I've got to say, um, I was really impressed with the art throughout the issue. Emma looks awesome. She's, uh, you know, she's hot as hell and she's angry. And I love the way she says um, to the cuckoos, like, we've been learning how to implant deceptive, erotic images, Jim, into the minds of our enemies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so pretty cool. crazy. So it's saying you're busy what's going to happen later. Though. Oh, yeah. Because as they're going, they want to talk. They do want to talk. Scott and um, Jean do, don't they, for sure. But Emma's kind of like, mm. Yeah, Emma really wants <laughs> to just, you know, get rid of these people. And you do end up seeing a human, uh, like, hospital or an ambulance type deal. So that's yeah. crazy. Uh, again, you know, you kind of get a sus deal of what they're there because they end up later even saying that, you know, the school is something that they could use to pretty much harvest organs if you're going to do that sort of thing. In the meantime, when Emma comes out, she says, like, I I'm teaching a class. I don't need this bullcrap. Yeah, what crap. are you doing here? Yeah, what are you doing with here? all you're these scaring things? them. Go yeah, away. And, uh, so that's when 
She even goes like diamond form and then says, enough of this rabble I'm trying to teach. And then all of a sudden, pretty much everybody, it's like a giant orgasmic orgy type thing they fall into. <laughs> and even they all say, have a peak experience, don't they, Jim, and collapse on the ground. Yeah, they just collapse. And I love where you end up having Jean's like, Emma. And she's like, ah, I push their bliss buttons. Jean, they'll wake up utterly ashamed of themselves. Don't say a word. And, and just walks off. She they'll had enough. Fine. And I like the idea. She did come out. She was angry. But they were talking. You had Scott and Jean talking to a reporter, these things. But Emma had enough. Like, things were not getting resolved in the one minute that she was allowing, and boom, she just ends it's up the having them all. It's the same story, Jim, isn't it? Like, the pro- they were protesting about, you know, come on, you're, you're going to be like making a private mutant army, aren't you, in this, this so-called school? That was the basic, um, the protesters. And, and again, it, it's one of those things. Why I think the X-Men work a lot of times, even with this, like, I could, you definitely could see this. And I'm telling you, if they presented it in some sort of way, I can't tell you that I wouldn't be at least concerned. I think that I'd be okay, but the idea where, oh, you know, all these mutants and they're popping up and people are dying and, oh, there's a school and it looks like that. Like, if, if all of a sudden all we saw was footage of the danger room and them just yeah. do that, you might you might be scared like, about it. Oh, my it. God, now, look at the, the training in army. It's true. Again, if they said that, I think that me and you – we would say that in our house. I don't think we'd take it to the streets. No, so I, I no. wouldn't go to the institute. And I'd be like, oh, that's kind of a concern or whatnot. Or maybe I would watch a bit. But yeah, these I'll just get me pitchfork, Jim, and meet me exactly. burning torch. Like, you get the pitchfork, I get the torch. We'll meet <laughs> yeah. in the middle. Let's go. Let's go kick some butt. But again, I wouldn't be there because I'd be afraid that I'd get my butt kicked because I'm telling you, they would be able to just rip she through me. She can hit my bliss button any time exactly. she wants, Emma. I'll like, say that's that. the other thing. It'd be funny. There's one guy who's like, hit me again. Like, this guy wants more of the bliss <laughs> button. He's like, Homer Simpson, like, hit me, hit me. Uh, but yeah, and Emma just, I love how the, the from the top view, that bird's eye view, where she's just walking back in because she's like, I did it. I'm done. And Gene is so mad. Even though Gene was starting to fight, with the reporter even, and that's kind of what they want. They, they are kind of baiting them. They are trying they to get are, them. They want a reaction. They're pushing them to do exactly. that. Exactly. So while that's going on, you do have Gene and Scott, and they go in, and we have Beast. Beast it's is a nice scene, on isn't the it? table. Catch up yeah. with Beast. Poor Beast, Jim. He's unconscious in a cobra, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, he is ripped apart. And I I like where she she's filling in the Beast on what happened, like, even I wanted to do what Emma did, but it was wrong, wasn't it? They wasn't she's trying to decide question, yeah. like she's there. And, <laughs> and again, Scott's there and he's like, well, you know, John Sublime back in the news after, you know, this and he's watching the TV. And while you do see Gene really does care for Beast and trying to, you know, come back. He says, why? Why would they do this? Why, why would anyone why want to hurt crazy? Beast like this? And, and it is yeah. true. Like this Beast form is the big, you know, Beast form. But I guess it would look threatening at points, but I always think he looks kind of like cute, whatever. But, you know, they, they, they hurt him. And that's where you end up where you have tissues and issues with Scotty brings over a tissue. Hey, here, have a tissue. And there's some weird plays in here. As it goes on, you end up having the announcement. Hey, some of the humans are wearing a Magneto shirt. This is because Genoshi, he's supposed to be dead. They're kind of growling around him. And there's been times where you have the Magneto's right shirt, the yeah, the Cyclops is right. The Scott's right shirt, too. I like the Magneto on lunchboxes, Jim. Yeah, on lunchboxes. <laughs> they were like, lunchboxes? <laughs> like, all that. But then, in a weird play, you end up having Jean say, hey, you didn't sleep with Emma while we were both in Hong Kong, right? And she says, I don't want to read your mind about it. I don't want to do that. But did you sleep with her? And Scott's reaction is that he says, no. No, I didn't. She kept me awake all night. I mean, they're like that's like, hey, did you sleep? Like, that no, is not we... a good answer, is it? That that's not what Gene wants it's to no, hear. No, not at all. And I was like, what is going on? Like, what is going why on would there? you say that? It's so weird. But you do see, it looks like Beast maybe kind of coming to. It's a weird, even yeah. Play. He's moving and he's, he's like carving a little cross or an X yeah, in, yeah, the, bed sheets in there. the bed sheet. So that's something that he's probably writing. Stupid answer, Scott. It's what he's writing after yeah, Scott's yeah. like, oh, well, we didn't sleep. If, Scott, you know, you it's, idiot. It's, it's like You're the worst it type worse. of semantics, right? That he's, he's using that. But then we go and we see this whole deal, and they're talking about this John Sublime and how he says that he's saying, why can't we all be mutants? You know, he, he has this third It's species. not fair, is it, Jim? There's these super beings own. They're like a chosen few. It's not fair. And the worst thing, and, and you'll end up where he is going to get a visit from both Gene and, and Scott. And his idea, though, is like, 
he is preaching, grabbing, he's like harvest the organs and do it, but he says he isn't. It's like, that's not what I'm saying, but he kind of is. And yeah. even the idea that the human ambulance is playing, and he, he throws it out there that really that's what he really is doing. But then he's not being subtle about it, is he at all? It's kind of like not even hiding in plain sight. Well, maybe no, he is, not at know. all. And it's just a weird play. We get another weird play where then we go off and we see an awful scene. I mean, you end up where it is Tempest, uh, but at this point, you know, she it says she's not really named yet, but no. she is just being beaten. And there's talk of her being under it. There's a lot of bad things where this guy's just like, oh, man, you grew up dirty. You gave me mutant kids. Like, all this bad stuff. He's having a go at his wife. He's trying to beat his daughter. And she says at this point, I'm I'm 14 years old. I'm scared of you, isn't it? You know? And his wife's screaming, she's not even yours. She's yeah, not yeah. yours. That's the worst. And <laughs> he doesn't want to hear that. He has a, a like a whip, like a right. He's it's got his bad. belt, yeah. Yeah, the belt going. And basically, she ends up like, I'm out of here. And even then, like, she's all burned, and it's bad. And she says, I'm out. And she goes and just sleeps on a rock, it looks like, in the middle of the woods, which is bad. But you do end up seeing in the background a bunch of trucks coming in uh, because she wakes up. I didn't get to those, those burns, like, on the back, on the back. I thought that was kind of part of her powers, but he's trying to burn her wings off or something. Yeah, or something. yeah that that's what he's doing. There? It seems Jesus, like through the whole that's thing, terrible. He, like, he ends up where it's like, okay, it's it's cigar time. And he's trying to burn some of the oh wings to glove. It's awful. It's really awful. And like you said, I thought it was the powers at first as well. I thought maybe she had like molten skin up because yeah, I didn't really yeah. know. And then when I looked it up, I'm like, ooh, that, that's bad. That's well, really she has bad. a healing factor because she goes to sleep in the woods and wakes up in the morning with the sun and the wings there on her back. Yep, it's she really, has really the wing. beautiful. So he is able to, he was able to kind of burn the wings off or at least make them so they couldn't pop, but she does heal them out. yeah. And so while that's going on, though, she ends up even spitting out acid. But I didn't I don't know this character very well. And it seemed odd. I don't. But she ends up being attacked by these crazy. I mean, I can't even explain. They're almost like a Cronenberg looking thing at at one point, the way the one thing plays out. But they're these sci-fi like soldiers that are trying to take flashbacks to what was it 12 monkeys with bruce willis that that terry gilliam movie stuff like that terry gilliam it it does it looks more fantastical than what it would be normally like oh they're just like you know riot soldiers i thought they were wearing hazard suits but they're not there's more to it are they like kind of robotic or something yeah but and the crazy thing too is like they have helmets but then over them they have glass helmets like yeah classic like Almost like a Buzz Lightyear helmet deal, and it's kind of cool, but she flies it's a cool off. Look. Yeah. The worst is she flies off and then flies right into the power lines. Because she's panicking. And says, oh, no. She gets zapped by the power line and drops to the floor. You see that same ambulance type deal. Those guys come in and scoop her up, and she's just begging not to get hurt, which again, yeah. is sad. I mean, she's been treated like piss poor throughout this whole issue. But then we go to John Sublime, who's going to be talking to it's funny that it is emma because emma's not going to take any guff but emma and scott and he just keeps telling that line of listen you know i'm not saying and it's one of those like he is saying what he's saying but he's like i'm not really yeah. saying that you know i, I don't you don't want to get involved in I'm that but, about, yeah, it was an illegal mutant organ smuggling scam we just smashed in hong kong that says scott it's like yeah your species really is aggressive <laughs> that's what he's talking about <laughs> it is funny and he's like I think I, I want to get some of those organs from you guys. Like, this is pretty crazy. But yeah, he ends up really at this point, like being on Front Street because he has more of these soldiers. And now we yep. definitely see that those soldiers were his that ended up getting Tempest because they come in. There is a weird progression here when you end up because they're marching in, I guess, being kind of sneaky because it doesn't seem like Cyclops I can't or believe Emma doesn't notice them or That's Scott. what I'm saying, yeah. or, or feel that. And maybe that's where the domes are, but these guys don't even have it. But she, like, it almost is the idea that it, she blocked this guy's punch with her face. Like, it actually looks like that to me. It, it is more of a weird play because she, you see the, it getting cocked back she looks over, and then all of a sudden she's just walloped, and she didn't react. But she's like, "Oh my god, broke my nose!" Like, broke my nose, yeah, like Marsha and, and saying, the Brady something bunch. in my head. Yeah, really weird, yeah, they, they really they're messing with them, and they're really going. They've with got some it. kind and of powers, Jim, or is it is it Sublime holding that weird brain in a in a glass bowl? And these things are really crazy, like sci fi images. You have a glass bowl with a brain that has a bunch of, you know, 
needles and yeah. going in and he's kind of like pushing them in, pushing the plungers and things like that. And he says, your mutant school will make a fine organ farm supplying the limitless needs of the third species. I'm like, he is now like, this is a guy who thinks he's won already. I mean, he's, he's making the epic on. mistake, isn't he? He's telling them his, his plan because he thinks he's got them. So like, beautiful. you know what I mean? He's captured, at least at this moment, looks like he's captured Emma and it's like, put them in a cell. They don't need to know, but these guys, they can't help it. They have to yeah. gloat and whatever. Because, yeah, they just throw them. They won't have any clue what's going on. In the meantime, though, you do end up having Gene, who's cerebral, and, and getting Logan, who is going to go and save Jim, how Tempest. awesome is that image? We met Logan on the motorbike. That motorbike looks brilliant in yeah, the rain. Yeah, Yeah, even, like, the tire tracks. And when he goes and he ends up going to that U-Man uh, ambulance and when he opens it up even he is disturbed by you know what's going on here and it looks like some crazy stuff they have her down on a bed kind of gurney strapped down and he ends up popping the claws he's got like laid the- weapons in their hands or instruments they're gonna they're gonna take off her wings aren't they pretty much he's just got there in time and the crazy thing about it is is that they uh they're not even waiting to get back to anything I, like they're on the spot doing this and it's pretty pretty intense and yeah logan is not happy he is uh giving the the schnick and he's great finally he's there with his fist you know and the the, what do you call it the blades coming out to see how that continues now i did go forward just because i have the one trade i looked and i right away i realized like yeah this doesn't look like uh ethan van skyver stayed along much he's not on the next issue so oh, I, I don't know oh, no 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 and it, it's a change of art art, which is odd. throughout this yeah it's the really good. next issue's art is a little bit different i'm looking to see if maybe he had a, a just a break or whatever but i'm now no no it's a different pencil and inker igor or igor yeah, cordy, igor cordy. Yeah. I like igor. Okay. yeah maybe maybe again you know you have uh either man scary Sometimes rubs people the wrong way. So maybe that maybe that happened or maybe I don't know. We'd have to see. But what would you give this one? Okay, well it's great to be back with the new X Men. I was a little bit confused at times, like we talked about, but um I had to check the uh what do you call it, the, the database of Marvel mm-hmm, Wiki to get too. it. But just the art, it won me over, despite the controversy of who the artist is, you know, you can't argue he was a great artist, you know, in his time there. And I enjoyed the story, Jim. I'm looking forward to issue two. So I'm uh, well, the next issue. So going to give it, here we go, 8.5 out of 10. I think I'm an 8.5 as well. I'm going. They, they, this, I think we even had it before, but Frank quietly shows up again. Yes. You have a bunch of different changes. So we'll see. I think it might be just rotating uh, through a I bunch think of so. things. So we'll see. But we like Frank quietly. I uh, can't wait to do those. But again, this is a three-issue arc. You told me, and we'll see if we continue or we go, because we have a bunch of other things that we could get back to like animal man but for now we have this and i i'm glad that we're back to this i'm glad that we're doing some of the x-men too. and yeah uh, it's funny too because even when we were going the idea of xavier and and his you know sister deal and we had that and then after we had talked about it, they had an, the announcement that's going to be in the wolverine deadpool movie that was kind of cool like we actually were in the know so we'll see it was crazy jim in the issue before like um xavier i think you think it's hank the beast he 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 realizes that Xavier's got the same DNA as Nova, you know the, and Xavier's like basically being possessed by her. And the next, the last thing you see him, he's getting on a spaceship, going up into space somewhere. So he's off planet now. He's off world. That's crazy. So yeah, I didn't even know. So that is really crazy. But yeah, like Nova and that being one of the villains that's coming in the MCU. So that's kind of cool. We kind of know about it. Uh, but that's that. That is it. So thanks, what do you think, everybody. Like, I don't think Grant Morrison's X Men gets a lot of love, especially from like traditional X Men fans. But I, I read this. Like coming to this, I've read a few of the more recent X Men stuff, and there's no comparison, Jim. There's so much more going on in this issue. But did you did I you mention it. it when we were on the comics aficionados? I, I did you say that? You, I did. I think like, I got yeah, shouted I down like, "Oh, Grant Morrison sucks." You know, his X Men. So me and you were definitely we should have been on that Marvel show. <laughs> I know, <laughs> wrong place at wrong time. Yeah, we had nothing to say uh but unfortunately we were there and we tried but here we are and as we go through these it, it is one of the only things from marvel that we're doing on the morrison deal is this x-men we'll see how, yeah. how it see continues how it but you you take us out of this and we will uh end it okay well it's great to be back recording and uh, reading morrison and thanks for the opening song jim i loved it i loved hearing jimmy jimmy singing yes, my name jimmy. so we hope we're giving you more reasons to read grant morrison Stand. 
Here we go, reading the X-Men. 